we're so thankful that you've joined us today at 10 at 10 and we just believe God's helping us. He's helping us to learn, to listen to his voice, to recognize his voice, to follow his voice and therefore see success in our life or see protection in our life or see us be a blessing to those that God's put in our steps. And so let's just pray over this time. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it never fails. We thank you for your precious Holy Spirit that's teaching and leading today, Father. Lord, um, Father, help uh, I yield to you. Help me to speak, Father, what you've designed for me to speak, Lord, with clarity. And Father, help us to have ears to hear and receive your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're so happy that you've joined us today. And that just shows that you're wanting to learn and you're wanting to grow in your life. And I believe that God will honor that. The first way that we said that God speaks to us is uh, through his written word, through our Bibles. And so we've stressed the importance of reading our Bible on a daily basis, um, taking in the word, because in John 17, 7, it says, thy word is truth. And so when we're taking in that reserve of truth on a daily basis, it actually helps us to hear his voice more accurately in areas that personally affect us. And we said in Romans 12, 2, um, a very well-known verse, but it actually talks about listening and being able to understand what God's will is for your life. And that's on a personal basis. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And that's talking about his perfect will for your life. And we know that when we're in that will, we can have confidence God's going to take care of us. We can have confidence that it's all going to turn out right, even if it looks a little messy at times. And so the first thing that we want to do is we want to be reading our Bible and studying our Bible regularly every day. And we said, even if you just set aside a small amount of time, do it the same time every day if you can in the same location. This helps you build some steadiness in your life. The next thing that we said to just build on that thought is it's God's design for you to recognize and follow his voice. The Bible um, actually gives the example or it calls Jesus the good shepherd. I love the way that it says he's the good shepherd. And it says he, um, he calls his sheep by name. They hear his voice. He goes out on ahead of them. He leads them. They recognize that voice and they follow that voice. And so that's actually talking about you. And even if you're new in this or maybe you've had some hiccups in this area, I want you to just speak over yourself. I hear his voice. I hear God's voice and the voice of another I do not follow. And so that's actually scriptural to speak that over yourself. So the second way that we hear God's voice, it's through the inner witness. And we gave some examples yesterday that salvation is an example of the Holy Spirit bearing witness to your spirit that you're born again. Um, we talked about how the early church was led through the inner witness. They said it seemed good to us. And we said it's not that it seemed good up here. It seemed good down in their spirit and in their heart. And then we talked about yielding also to supernatural peace in your spirit, even again, if it doesn't make total sense in your head or if you don't have all the details, but you, you get that that smoothness on the, in the inside, that peace on the inside. And so we said, yield to the peace of God. But if you get an unsettledness, if you get a check, if there's an uneasiness, stop what you're doing. Take time to pray so that God can help direct you, help maybe help you make some adjustments. The third way that we hear God's voice is actually through what we would call the still small voice or the still quiet voice. And again, we're not talking about an outward voice. We're talking about a voice on the inside of our spirit man. And we're going to give an example out of the Old Testament. This is in the life of the prophet Elijah. And it's found in 1 Kings. And this is chapter 9. We're going to look at verses 10 through 13. 
And in this particular setting, it, the prophets were being killed. There was a, a persecution that was happening and Elijah's coming before the Lord and he goes, he goes, I'm the only one left. Everybody's being killed off. He was seeing things from the very worst perspective. But it says in verse 11, God gives him direction. God's again, just focusing in him and helping him to settle in and listen to his voice. And God says to Elijah, he says, go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and a strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak. He went out and he stood at the entrance of the cave. So Elijah recognized there was a whole bunch of voices coming at him. Man, I'm the only one left, which he wasn't. But Elijah was taking in voices of fear. Elijah was taking, there was a confusion going on in his mind. And God redirected him back to his spirit. And it's interesting because in this example, God wasn't found in the loud, uh, boisterous things. God wasn't found in the things that were, um, I don't know, out there, big and booming in this situation. God was found in the stillness, that low whisper. Romans 8 14 gives us the example it says uh, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God and how we're led is again that inner that that inside voice that still quiet voice is another way that we can be led um, and so I just want to give you just an example from my own life to just kind of help uh, give it a real life example um, my husband and I were living in Bakersfield with our children, and we had just moved there. Um, I had begun um, being a notary, which again, God had led me to do that. I'm not going to go into that story right now, but I was just having some prayer time in my house, and I don't know how to explain it, but the, it was such a quiet voice, but such a clear voice, and I just felt on the inside, I heard build shelves in your office closet. You're going to need them. And so guys, if you know Pastor and I, we're not particularly handy with a hammer and nails. We're not really do-it-yourselfers to any um, big, um, we're, that's just not our, our, our strength. But I knew that I heard God. And to be honest, I could have dismissed it. It was such a quiet voice, but it was clear. And so instead of ignoring it, I just moved on it. And I said to my husband, I said to Pastor Jason, I said, honey, I feel like God wants us to build shelves in our closet. And in the existing closet, there was just one rack of shelves, similar to a lot of homes where, you know, just one rack where you can hang clothes. But God was saying to me, put shelving in so that there's a layering of shelves. And so my husband, as good of a man as he is, he didn't get that witness in his heart, but he trusted the witness that I had. He trusted the voice that this, the voice on the inside. I didn't hear it outside. I heard it inside. And so we built some shelves. We actually got them up. It worked. And at, at that particular time, I was probably getting two to three signings a month, which is nothing. You don't need shelves uh, to do mortgage signings um, in just having two to three a month. But um, I actually got a call. Uh, probably, I'm going to say it was within a few days. It wasn't even that long of a period of time. I was getting my hair done. Kind of funny. I had all the foil in my hair. I was looking funny. I'm in a salon and I get a call and I recognize that it's a number I don't know. And so I picked it up and I said, this is Peggy. Uh, may I help you? And they proceeded to introduce themselves that they were from a mortgage company and that they were going to be blanketing the area of Bakersfield and they were calling and interviewing notaries to see who they would like to use. And so I literally acted like I was sitting at a desk, but actually I had foil in my hair. There was, you know, the lady was putting color in my hair. But I just acted like I was at my desk. I professionally answered the questions um, and just proceeded on. But I would say not even a few days passed and I received a signing from them. 
And so currently I was receiving about maybe two to three hundred dollars maximum as an income before I received that call. But just a couple days passed and suddenly within one month I had twenty five hundred dollars of business. And in fact, I did need the shelving in that closet to keep all the documents separate because we had always multiple signings happening within the same day and we needed to keep the paperwork straight. And so I believe in my heart that if I wouldn't have yielded, if I wouldn't have, have li listened to that voice, guys, it didn't make sense to put shelving in that closet at the time that he told me. But I believe he wanted me to act on his voice. And because I did, then that opportunity was opened up. And literally for about a year and a half, that company was one of the main companies that brought us business on a monthly basis. And so that's an example of hearing this still quiet voice. I could have dismissed it, but I didn't. And I, God showed it. God showed up, and we just give Him the glory for that. And so I want to encourage you that within your own life, um, if God's speaking to you in a still quiet voice, and it may not even seem important, maybe God wants you to go encourage your neighbor. Maybe God wants you to call up a relative. Just small things that it seems like it wouldn't even be important. I want you to practice following God's voice and following it quickly because when you do, then you start learning sometimes through trial and error what the voice of God is, but also you grow in confidence of what it is to yield to that still quiet voice or to yield to that inner witness or to yield to that peace or just yield to what the word of God is directing you to do on a, on a written basis. And the more you do that, the more sound you become in hearing his voice. And so stay tuned. We're going to be talking more tomorrow. I believe that you, I believe God's just downloading his goodness into you and he's helping you. So we love you so much. Just remember, we go up. Remember that with God, we go up. He's the factor that makes you go up. So lean into him, listen to his voice, follow his voice. We love you so much.